Hey Scar friends and welcome back to Sully Scar Models. So in this episode we are going to be looking at the outside part of uh, the Tamiya 135th Mag half track. So we're going to be looking at uh, pretty much finishing uh, the exterior part of the uh, vehicle and as well as we'll be doing as a wee bit of painting and weathering. So before we get into it, grab yourself a brew and a bicky and uh, let's go for it. So straight away, I'm going to get all these little parts um, out of the way because within the uh, Eddard's upgrade kit, it comes with um, you know new brackets uh, to replace uh, the kit ones. Um, so I'm going to clean all those up um, off the um, the original parts. So getting getting all the uh, original clamps off and everything that sort of ties it down uh, to the vehicle. I'm going to clean those up. Um, and then we'll do the clamps because uh, they could go on completely separately um, to these parts. Um, the shovel in particular um, has a uh, backing uh, to go on. Um, so we'll, I'll clean up its, uh, the holding uh, bracket that was um, originally on there. And as you can see down there in the background, there's the, um, you know, more of a spade uh, looking bit of uh, brass etching there um, obviously that just gives it a little bit more um, you know just a little bit more detail it's not something necessary that needs to go on uh, really because I mean the spade spade uh, but you know it's within the kit we might as well just use it um, so what I did first with it was uh, I annealed it um, so I can conform it to the shape of the spade a little bit easier so you can see there we've got all the uh, tiny little brackets um, in that were quite fiddly. They are massively uh, small. Uh, this is very fiddly uh, to put together, so you can see there how small uh, those parts are. So Edward's upgrade kit also comes with uh, some number plates, some front and rear ones. These are actually the exact same numbers at they are actually in the decals. Uh, later on I actually removed this because I did such a bad job at painting it um, and replaced it with the decal. Um, but you can also see there the uh, headlight covers that come um, within the kit. And I also added um, some wires in there as well uh, to make them look connected. So, as I said in the first episode, I'm not using the figures because I'm going to make a kind of like little diorama within itself. So, what I've done or what I'm trying to uh, recreate is the fact that the half track has been in um, somewhat of a firefight and I couldn't actually find these decent, decent reference photos of you know just being peppered with gunshot um, so I, I had a bit of a guess um, that there would be a few um, dinks and creases in there um, so most of the fire is sort of directed from the front side uh, towards that uh, top MG there. Um, so as you can see, I'd use a rotary tool just to create all those um, sort of bullet holes and, and uh, ricochets. So what I'm also going to be doing is the same as I did on the interior. I'm going to use the uh, you know the hairspray chipping technique basically, but I'm using AK's uh, AK Interactive's uh, one effect. Uh, for this so I sprayed it with uh, Hataka Red Primer um, as the base coat because that's the general base coat of uh, most German vehicles sprayed on the uh, worn effect let it go off a little bit I put about three or four coats of the stuff on and then used uh, Hataka's Dunkel Grow same as I did on the interior now once I've put a few uh, thin coats to cover the model um, I went about scratching and chipping away as I did again the same as the interior so I've used um, a pin uh, or an old uh, needle from an airbrush uh, to do some scratch work uh, just a standard brush uh, to apply uh, water another brush just a dry brush to, to remove any excess and here I'm using a uh, sort of Make, I've made it myself, well I say made it myself, I just cut the uh, brush down so it's kind of quite uh, stiff. 
and I'll start working away at basically nearly all uh, of uh, the corners, uh, some of the areas that will probably most likely get chipped. Um, I probably went a little bit harder on this side because I was thinking, you know, if it's getting hit by bullets, probably a good chance chunk, more chunks of paint uh, are actually going to come off. Um, I don't know if that's real or not. I, I, I've had to sort of go on a little bit of um, guesswork. So the camo itself, I free-handed, as you can see there, uh, using Hataka's Grun. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, probably should have gone with a slightly lighter green because this was quite um, dark, really. Um, I did later on try and uh, lighten uh, this up. But I also have put another layer of uh, AK's one effect down because, again, I'm going to want to um, chip this away as well. I also then used Hataka's uh, Chocolate Brain. Um, of pretty much pretty much all the colours on this are going to be Hataka because I actually bought these for another project that I'm waiting to come through the post. Um, but I thought it's a good opportunity to try here um, as well. So what I did uh, before putting the camera on, as you can see in the background there, I took some reference photos so I can go back um, now and start chipping at uh, the same areas and hopefully getting some of those scratches in that I put down before. So within the Eddard's upgrade kit, they actually come with uh, stencils uh, for the uh, iron crosses. What I initially did was, you can see I'm using some liquid mass to sort of uh, cover those uh, chips so we can take them off later. I was a little bit lazy and decided to uh, stipple it on with a sponge. It didn't look very good um, at all, so I should have just really, you know, actually made the effort and actually sprayed it on. But once I took the uh, mask off, the paint underneath, mainly on the, the uh, green, had actually lifted away with it. Fortunately, I managed to um, stick that back down. I just literally just put some water on it and it just seemed to have sit back flush. Um, you can see also a massive chunk of paint on this side uh, come away with it. So in the end, what I did was I just covered it uh, with the um, decal uh, from in the kit. Um, and later on, I touched up that large uh, chunk of uh, paint that was missing. So once that was all done, I was happy with it um, to a degree. <laughs> Um, it's not turned out the way I really wanted it to, but I went in with uh, Tamiya panel line, went round um, all the bolts and um, sort of whatever panels and whatever's on there, even particularly over the bullet holes, just to sort of try and accentuate those a little bit and make them stick out a little bit more. Um, so afterwards, just cleaned it off with a damp uh, brush with uh, some white spirits, and you see a cotton wool bud there, just giving it a little bit of a wipe over. Um, try not to take too much away and push it more into uh, any recess areas and those bullet holes as well. So I wanted to give the impression that this vehicle has also been out in the field for a considerable amount of time. So I've used um, AK's uh, Grime. This is mainly for um, vehicles that are mainly painted green. But I tried it on the um, you know the lighter part of the camera. And I think it looked okay. I mean, yeah, it, 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 I mean to, to the eye, it actually looks a bit more uh, black uh, than it does green. Uh, but over the green parts, as you can see, it does work uh, pretty well. And so, as you've seen, I just dabbed a couple of uh, blobs on with a uh, flat brush. I then just streaked it down and then cleaned it up again with white spirits. So I should have added uh, some rain streaks uh, in there as well. I'm not quite sure um, actually how well this really turned out. I mean, two mines. I think it turned out okay. I think it definitely does add a little bit uh, more to it. Um, so I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Did I pull this off or does it just look a little bit naff? I don't know. Um, so I couldn't tell you the exact um, ratios because I made this solution up uh, from Night Shift Models. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll link uh, in the description, uh, the video that he makes 
uh, this solution in. So there we go, my friends. That's uh, the exterior uh, all done and dusted. Um, next week's episode, we will be looking at uh, wheels and tracks. So I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this episode. If you're new around here and you like what you see, maybe consider liking, subscribing to the channel. Uh, you can also put bell notifications on, which of course will tell you when uh, next week's or the next episode uh, will be out and available. Also, if you'd like to support me and the channel, there are links in the description down below. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you again soon.